In section 2.4, we will talk about graphing lines using the slope-intercept form. The slope-intercept form of a line is given by the equation y equals mx plus b, where notice that the y is by itself. Whenever we solve for y, we get this equation y equals mx plus b. m is the slope of the line. Remember, slope is the rise over the run and the b is the y-intercept. The reason the b is a y-intercept is because if you set the x value equal to 0, then anything times 0 is 0, so this whole thing becomes 0, and you have b as the y-intercept. To find the slope and the y-intercept of a line, always solve for y. So anytime you're asked to graph a line or if you're asked to solve for the slope and the y-intercept, we need to solve for y. So the first question says find the slope and the y-intercept of the given line, then graph the line using the slope and the y-intercept. So slope, m, is always going to be the coefficient of the x, the number in front of the x. And the y-intercept, if you set x equal to 0, then this whole thing just goes away. So the y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, negative 4. Okay, to graph this line, we start at 0, negative 4. This is your y-intercept. Our slope is 3 halves, so we're going to go up 1, 2, 3 units, go across 2 units. That is our next point. And we can keep doing this infinitely, go up 3 and over 2, go up 3 and over 2. You just need two points, but I just wanted to show you that no matter how many times you keep doing this, you will end up on the same line. And so, in fact, this line is a collection of all the points that have a y-intercept of negative 4 and a slope of 3 half. Let's take a look at another equation. This should be, there should be an x there, I apologize. So this is y equals to negative 3 over 4x plus 2. So please add that x. Um, let's identify the slope. The slope m this time is negative 3 fourths. And our y-intercept is going to be 0 comma 2. So how do you graph a line? You always start with those with the y-intercept we always need to start with a point on the line we know the y-intercept is a point on the line so we're going to start with 0 comma 2. now for a slope of negative 3 fourth we have two different options option one is that we can keep the slope with the numerator like so we can say slope is negative 3 fourth where the negative sign is with the numerator if we do that that means our rise is negative 3 and our run is positive 4. so from here we're going to go down 1 2 3 we go down because our rise is negative and then we go across 4 because our run is positive or we can move the negative sign with the denominator like this 3 divided by negative 4. if we do it this way then now the rise is positive 3, so we're going to go up 1, 2, and 3. And our run is negative 4, so negative means we go in the negative direction. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left. So we can either go down 3 and over 4, or we can go up 3 and left 4. And notice what happens, that these three points, they are on the exact same line. Now, we don't need all three. We only need two. So you can determine, do I want to go down and right, or do I want to go up and left for negative slopes only? OK, what happens if the y is not by itself? Like in this case, we have negative 4x minus 3y equal to negative 9. What happens in that case? Well, our first step is to get the y by itself. So to get the y by itself, we have to move the negative 4x to the right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add 4x to each side. So the negative 4x and 4x, they add to 0. We have negative 3y equals to 4x minus 9. Now the y is being multiplied by negative 3. And so the opposite of multiplying by negative 3 is to divide by negative 3. But we have to make sure we divide every single term by negative 3, not just the x, but also the negative 9. All the terms get divided by negative 3. Why do we divide by negative 3? Because the y is being multiplied by negative 3. And the opposite of multiplying, the inverse of multiplying, is dividing. So we get the y by itself. You have a positive divided by negative. That is a negative 4 over 3x. 
we have a negative divided by negative, which is a positive 3. So now that the y is by itself, our slope m is going to be negative 4 over 3, and our y-intercept b is going to be the point 0, 3. And anyway, uh, so just as a reminder, for a y-intercept, the x always has to be 0, which is why we have 0, 3. So to graph this, we're going to start off at 0, 3. Our slope is negative 4 thirds, and you can go either way. You can go down 4 across 3, or you can go up 4 left 3, but I'm going to choose to go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm going to go across 3. That's my second point, and this is my line. Let's try another one. We start by moving the, so whenever the y is not by itself and you're asked to find the slope and the y-intercept, we have to always get the y by itself. So we have 8y equals to 20x plus 40. And then the y is being multiplied by 8, so the inverse of that is going to be to divide by 8. So 20 divided by 8, we have to reduce that. So 20 and 8 can both be divided by 4. So this gives us 5 over 2. And then 40 divided by 8 is going to be 5. So our slope m is going to be 5 half. And our y-intercept b is going to be the point 0, 5. So we start off at 0, 5. Um, now, here, if I go up 5, I run out of space, right? So um, I'm going to have to add some lines. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if, you, if this happens, if you're not a space, you can just add lines. So we're going to go up 5 and over 2. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we're going to go across 2 this way. Okay, next one, it says, after visiting the Titanic, Captain Brain and Mr. Pinky are, ta are taking, Alvin, uh, taking the Alvin submarine back to the surface of the water. They start at 1,700 meters below the surface of the water and ascend 48 meters per hour. Write an equation to model the situation. Use M, there's two of them, but use M for meters and H for hours. So, um, the number of meters we're at depends on how many hours have passed because remember we're ascending at 48 meters per hour so when you write the equation initially we're at 1700 meters below the surface so that's negative 1700 when you're below the surface you're at a negative um, negative height so we have negative 1700 there's no variable because that's that's where we're starting out and then for every hour that passes we are going to climb 48 meters. So this is your equation. OK, uh, lastly, let's sketch the graph of the following lines. Uh, first one is x equals to 3. Now, if you were to make a table of values, notice that we have no y value. So whenever there's no y value, that means every x value is going to be 3. And for the y's, we can make up whatever we want. I'm going to make up like negative 1, 0, and 1. So if I were to graph this line, I have 3, 1, or 3, negative 1, 3, 0, and 3, 1. So what I have here is I have a vertical line that goes to the point x equals to 3. And the easiest way to know this is if you look at the the um, the the dash here at x equals to three, it's a vertical dash. So we know we're going to get a vertical line. So this line is a collection of all the points that have an x coordinate of three. Like pick any point on this line, this one here, that's three, six, this is three, five. So this is a collection of all the points where the x coordinate is equal to three. Now let's take the y coordinate. Let's say we have y equals to four and I make a table of values. So because I have no x value, this tells me that all the y values are 4. y equals 4 means every y value has to be 4. 
And so let's say for x's, I can make up any values I want. X doesn't exist, so I can make x whatever I want it to be. So now I have negative 1, 4. I have 0, 4. And I have 1, 4. So this is a collection of all the points that has a y value of 4. So x equals to a number that is always going to be a vertical line. And if you have y equals to a number, this is always going to be a horizontal line. So this time, let's do, let's do x equals negative 5 without our table. Let's find uh, x equal to negative 5, which is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. There's a vertical dash on it. And so we're going to get a vertical line at x equal to negative 5. Whenever we just have a single variable, either x or y, you always get a straight line, either vertical or horizontal. If it's x equals something, it is a vertical line. And if it's y equals something, it is a horizontal line. So lastly, let's take a look at y equal to negative 2. So let's find the point y equals negative 2, which is here. Notice there's a horizontal dash on it. So y equals negative 2 is going to be a horizontal line. And I'll label these other ones. This is x equal to 3. And um, this purple one was y equal to negative 5. Or, sorry, x equals negative 5. Okay, so x equals anything is going to be a vertical, and y equals anything is going to be a horizontal line.